Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. In this video, we'll demonstrate the database authentication functionality in Oracle REST Data Services. This feature allows us to use database users as our authentication method. There are much better authentication and authorization options with ORDS, so this isn't the best choice. But if you have existing PLSQL Web Toolkit applications using Mod PLSQL, using this feature may ease your transition from Mod PLSQL to ORDS. Database authentication isn't enabled by default. To enable it, we have to set the JDBC Auth Enabled property using this command. The location of the ORDS WAR file will depend on your installation. The Gateway can use a validation function to control an allow list of procedures that can be called. Here we see the default Apex validation function. We need to replace it with our own validation function or remove it. We can remove the validation function reference manually or blank it with the following command. Once we've made the changes, we need to restart ORDS. I'm running ORDS on Tomcat, so I have to restart Tomcat. We create a schema-only user to hold the PLSQL API we're going to use to test the authentication. We create a package specification called User API containing a single procedure called Display User. The package body shows the implementation of the Display User procedure. It captures the Common Gateway Interface, or CGI, remote user value. This will show us the authentication user for the call. This value is output through the gateway as a JSON document. We create a new login user. We give it as few privileges as possible, just the create session privilege. We grant execute on the user API to the new login user. It's not necessary, but we also create a synonym so the new login user can call the user API without using the API owner schema prefix. We then create a second login user in a similar way. We're now ready to test the authentication. The curl command includes the credentials of the first login user. The URL is made up of the base ORDS URL, the package name and the procedure name. When we run the command, we see the resulting JSON document includes the login user's username. If we run the command using the credentials for the second login user, not surprisingly, we see it reflected in the resulting document. Without the synonym, we'd have to include the API owner schema to fully qualify the package procedure. Rather than use a synonym, we could use a logon trigger to set the current schema of the session to point to the API owner. Thanks for watching. As always, there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.